the new, okay. Thank you for coming. And we'll kick straight off, please. Yes. It's a fine. <laughs> Good start. Hi, Phil. Good afternoon. Um, interesting way to uh, announce the squad. I see you got your friend David Beckham involved. Was that your was that your idea? Yeah, we had, we had to speak to a few of my mates uh, to get them on board. No, but I thought I thought. Uh, you know, from a from a someone probably with old school values, I was quite nervous <laughs> about eight o'clock this morning. But I've got to say, even though I knew the squad, uh, I was waiting every fifteen minutes for the next one to come out to see who the next one was going to be unveiled. And I thought the idea behind it was that we wanted to make sure that it was special for every individual, not just to put out a list of twenty-three players to go to a World Cup. We wanted to make sure that it was special for every single uh, one of those players. We wanted to. Make it make these girls visible to everyone around the world. I think I think the reach from the from all the guys that that uh, sent the messages out was something like 170 million people. It, it reached. So, in terms of the growth of the women's football, in terms of growth and visibility of my players, uh, I thought it was really really special. And, and uh, I know speaking to a lot of the players once the obviously the messages were going out. Uh, they felt really special. They thought it was a big moment in their life. And, and I think going to a World Cup, we've we've tried to keep our players humble over the last 12 months. But I think today is the day where you, sh you shout from the rooftops. It's a special moment. They've dreamed all their lives about going to World Cup. I've dreamt all my life about going to a World Cup. Today is a celebration of, of their efforts, their sacrifices, and their performances over there over their careers really, not just the last 12 months and uh, it, it gives me great honour and, and pride to name these girls in, uh, in my World Cup squad. You haven't been shy in saying that you're going out to France mm. to win this World Cup. Are you confident that this is the squad that can deliver that trophy? Yeah, I am. I am. I've, uh, I've been, since I got the job really, I've, I don't think I've shied away from the expectations, the ambition of this team uh, and I sit here today in, in a position where I'm absolutely convinced that we can go to this World Cup and, and, and have a good, successful tournament. And, uh, you know, football is football. Anything can happen. We saw that last night in, in the Champions League game. Uh, but we've got a squad that's highly motivated. We've got a squad full of world-class players. Then we've got a squad that's now, I believe, got the belief and confidence to go to a World Cup to be successful. So that gives me great confidence as a manager. What was the toughest decision that you had to make when selecting this squad? Oh, the, 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 there was... There was a lot of tough decisions. Uh, I think I said in the April camp that the, the door was still open for a lot of players. Uh, you, you look at the performances of, say, Beth England last night. She scores some more goals. There, there, was, there was lots of tough decisions and tough fo phone calls to make. Uh, but ultimately, I think, I think what I've been thinking since the last camp was is that could I have done anything more as a manager over the last 16 months to give opportunities to any more players? And I think I could look myself in the mirror and say, you know, what? every single one of these players have had opportunities. And I think I think my best moment over the last 16 months was probably yesterday when uh, my proudest moment was that was the reaction of those that weren't in the squad. Uh, when when obviously we spoke to them and the overriding conversation was about how they wanted us to go to a World Cup and they wanted us to go to a World Cup and win it. And and I've got to say I'm not an emotional person, but a lot of a lot of those conversations yesterday made me emotional, thinking about the last 16 months, about the opportunities that we've given them, the platform to go out there and try and gain selection, and ultimately the phone calls yesterday were about them trying to wish me and the and the rest of the lionesses all the best in the summer and to come back with uh, with a World Cup with us and. Uh, I think it proved to me that over the last 16 months, I think we've done the right thing in terms of opening up that, opening up the gates to to getting a stronger pool, a wider pool, uh, more opportunities for everybody, uh, and, and that's the case. You've decided not to go with Izzy Christensen. Mm. Um, she's obviously not 100% fit. Yeah. What was her reaction? Uh, she was dis disappointed. She was devastated, as you can imagine. I mean, I don't think I've seen a player work as hard over the last probably since she believes of trying to get fit for a World Cup. And I've got to say, she's done everything that we've asked, her, asked for her. She's virtually lived at St George's Park for the last eight weeks. She's sacrificed everything in her life to get to this point. And I've got to say that, that, that she, she would have been fit to go to a World Cup and, and the selection for Izzy is purely based on performance. Performance of the other, other players that have took their opportunities in midfield and in the squad. And uh, it, it was a tough decision, but ultimately Izzy wished us all the best yesterday. She's, she's 
she's going to play a part in England over the next five, ten years because she's a really talented player. And uh, you know, it was it was obviously a disappointing news that we had to give her. But you know, she's part of our 36 players that we've used over the last 16 months. And uh, I can't thank her enough for all the commitment and the desire and her performance levels. It's just that it was a performance decision. Do you feel like the centre of midfield for England is a bit of a problem area with the, obviously the fact that Jordan Nobbs is out with a long-term injury? No, no, I don't see it as a pr problem area. Um, in terms of experience, there's a lot of experience in this squad. The likes of Jill Scott, Karen Carney going to the fourth mm -hmm. World Cup. Just a, a bit on them and what they bring to the squad. Yeah, the, the, the fantastic achievement. Uh, Jill, Jill was phenomenal in the last game against Spain. And... Uh, you know, we give her the captaincy. I think over the last 16 months, what what I've noticed with Jill is that she's she's that person in the squad that's always happy. It's always driving people on. There's always putting this, uh, putting the others before herself. And sometimes you can probably take her for granted in and around the squad. And uh, but never for one moment have I, have I ever took her for granted. She's a vital part of of what we've done in in the last 16 months. And if we're going to get success at the World Cup, Jill Scott will be someone that plays a major part in in, in what we're trying to do. And Karen Carney, uh, I spoke to her today because I didn't pick her for the first 12 months. You know, she was coming back from injury. Other players had taken opportunities. She was on standby list for three or four squads. And then and then she came into the squad for the Austria-Sweden camp in November, uh, did OK. And then we took her to Qatar. And it was in Qatar for the training camp where I thought, yeah, she can, she's, she's coming to the World Cup. Her influence on and off the field, her performance levels for Chelsea in the big games. You know, I assessed Karen Khan in the big games against Lyon, against P Paris Saint-Germain, the cross in the last minute in Paris uh, when uh, Marin Mieda scored uh, the goal that sent them through to the semi-final. That was a big moment and she's a big moments player, Karen. So big moments for them too. They can be unbelievably proud. Uh, and, and what I'll be saying to them too is, is that th th this is not going to be their last major tournament. You know, they're not coming to this tournament to have a swan song to say they're going to retire in afterwards. There's, there, there's so much quality in them too. It, it's unbelievable, and a uh, big part of my squad. And as well as experience, uh, you see the next generation coming through. The likes of Georgia mm. Stanway, the likes of Kira Walsh. How impressed have you been with them this season? Well, th there's nine. There's nine players I think going to this World Cup. It's going to be the first World Cup. Uh, you think of. Leah, Beth, Georgia, Kira, uh, Rachel Daly, even though she's not as young as, as, as those guys going to the first World Cup. So we, we've got some talented young players coming through. Uh, I've not been shy from day one uh, for bringing the young players through. I want, I want that young player coming through. They're, they're good enough. We've got, I've got Mo Marley ringing me every single day about the under-21s uh, talent that's coming through, and, and they will be drip-fed uh, into the squad in and around training camps, in and around obviously after the World Cup. So it's important that over over the last 16 months, these 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 players have had to have experience. You know, there's been times when, you know, you guys might think, you know, I've, I've rotated a lot, I've changed the team a lot, but I had to make sure that the likes of Kira, Leah, Beth got to a World Cup with closer to 10 caps than closer to no caps. And I think what we've seen, particularly in the Spain game, Georgia Stanway came of age in the, Sp in the Spain game. Leah Williamson proved that she can go to a World Cup and be a starter. And, and I think, Beth Weed, what we've seen over the last three months, I think we've seen the probably the, the fastest growing in terms of improvement out of everybody in the squad, in terms of becoming someone that was probably fighting to get into a squad to now, f now actually challenging for a starting place with their performances on the field. So the experience that we've given them have, has given them massive confidence and they've repaid that with their performances. Thank you. Hiya, Phil. Uh, the players found out the news yesterday, but yeah. when did you settle on your 23? Uh, last Monday. We, the, the, the technical staff had a meeting last Monday and Tuesday, and uh, we, we settled on the squad. I've got to say I wanted to tell the players straight away, uh, but because of Wendy, we had to tell them uh, yesterday. <laughs> uh, because, you know, you, because from day one, we've always been honest and upfront with them. And, and we communicate with them most days in terms of the performances, the training performances, how they're feeling. So the, the last seven days have been probably really, really long for me in terms of uh, I've wanted to communicate uh, my thoughts, the squad to them. But obviously, we had to wait till yesterday. And, you know, we, we asked them three three months ago how they wanted to be told. I've been told three different ways and uh, I thought it was important that we, we said to them, well, how do you want to be told? And, and they told me and we told them exactly how they wanted to be told. And uh, it, was, it was done and dusted yesterday morning.
of the players who will be going to the World Cup, who gave you the best reaction to the news? Uh, oh. Captain Steph, to be fair, she was she was probably the first text. Uh, she wants to win so badly. I've got to say, uh, she wants to win so badly, you know. But 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 some of the texts yesterday were really nice. I've got to say, the texts today were extra special because I, you know, what what I've learned over the last sixteen months is that that my players they do like to talk and they do want to probably tell the families and they want to tell the people around them that have played a part on their journeys and it wasn't until today that they could probably do that so today i think they've been probably more emotional today than they were yesterday because yesterday they had to you know keep quiet uh, couldn't tell anyone today they've they've been so emotional so happy and i think it's hit them today that, that, that they're going to go to a world cup and i think i think the the, the most impressive thing about today's announcement was that if I was a player being named today or being announced today, I would say, do you know what? We are we are back, being backed unbelievably by the FA. Uh, the exposure that them players have got this morning is probably far greater than any kind of exposure that they've got in their lives. And I think I think it's a reward from from myself, from everybody at the FA, the team behind the scenes have have worked probably for the last three months working on this. Uh, and I think it's a reward for the players for everything that they've done. Uh, and it shows the backing that we've, we, we're going to give them over the next uh, six weeks. How much can you tell us about the standby list? Uh, well, I've got 13 players on standby list. So uh, hopefully, and, and no disrespect to those on the standby list, I hope the 23 that I've named uh, come through the weekend's games, come through the Champions League games, the final, uh, unscathed. But we, we, we've got quality ready to come in I if needed. Are you able to give us any names at this point of the players no. not on the standby no. list? Um, last one for me. You're wearing a waistcoat today. Is that going to be a permanent fixture out in France? Uh, uh, I think I said the other day, I don't know if you was at the do the other day, that the, the, the players want me to wear a little, something a little bit more cooler, I think. Uh, but I think I am who I am. And uh, I think I remember I wore a tracksuit away in Kazakhstan and one of the players came up to me and said, boss, we want you back in your suit. I think it shows... You know, the England blazer, the waistcoat, the tie. It shows everything about us as lionesses. So, you know, 34 degree heats in, in, in Nice, will I'll still have my suit on, I think. It, 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 to be fair, I've been brought up that way. I was always brought up, shirt and tie, wear a blazer. Uh, it's, it's probably who I am, really. Thank you. Hiya, Phil. Uh, Steve Hopper. Oh, oh there you are. <laughs> Just wanted to get your thoughts. Big game, big warm-up game, the final warm-up game mm. taking place in Brighton at the Amex Stadium against New Zealand. How important do you think a game like that is, not only for the squad to build momentum, but also for the fans watching? It is, it's massively important. I think, I think what's important for that, that, that send-off game is that we fill that stadium. I really do. I think, I think what we saw on Saturday for the Women's FA Cup final was an unbelievable crowd. We're seeing these crowds keep getting bigger and bigger. But th that for us is, is, a, is a venue that we've picked. It's a Premier League venue. It's a, it's a brilliant stadium with a great pitch. It, it'll be a great occasion, uh, send off nine days before we play Scotland in Nice and we want that stadium full and I think uh, we want it to be a celebration for for everything that's gone on over, over, over the last two years of the campaign and we want it to be a nice send off for uh, for the players going to a World Cup that we want to be successful at. So we, we, we've chosen these venues wisely really because we, we think that that's a brilliant catchment area and what we found over the last 16 months is that the new areas that we keep going to we're, we're, we're tapping into a different a different supporter uh, someone that's probably never been to an England Lioness international game before and we're gathering massive momentum and a massive following you know our, our games in the World Cup are going to be watched by millions and millions of people. Hi there, Phil. Liam from ITV News here. And um, what could the exposure from France this summer do for girls here wanting to play the game? Well, it, it, it's it's massive for women's football. Uh, I think we I think we said about six months ago that you know I go to all the talent pathway conferences and and people keep saying how how can we inspire? I think we inspire by making making things visible. You know, the announcements today has made all my players visible. Uh, w when I grew up and, and I used to watch sport, I was inspired by Steffi Graf, Boris Becker at Wimbledon, or Ian Botham at cricket. You're inspired by people you watch on the telly. And then once you see these people on the telly, you go and join in local cricket club, football club, tennis club, and then you get involved in sports because you're inspired by people that you're watching and, and that impress you. And I, I hope that this summer, 
forget England. I think there's a there's a, there's a bigger picture than just England this summer. There's a there's going to be the greatest, biggest women's World Cup of all time, and I hope that when when that young girl, young boy, or male, female, adult, or whatever it is, was watching the World Cup in the summer, I th I want them to think, you know what? I will go and watch a WSL game next year. I will I will buy a Lucy Bronze, Steph Orton, Lioness kit, or I'll take my daughter to the local football club because she wants to play football. Because you know what? There are opportunities now greater than there's ever been before. And I think I think this World Cup, I think, is a tip is a slightly tipping point for the women's game where I think it's just going to go boom. I really do. I think we're in a we're in a period now where it can only get bigger and better. And uh, I think that is probably the bigger picture where this World Cup's uh, surrounding, really. And after last year's men's um, success, have you or any of the Lionesses taken any advice from them on, them on how to deal with the increased media uh, pressure and attention? Well, we've worked really hard on, on the media side because we, d we, d we do believe that the, the media attention will be far greater than that w that what these players have ever experienced before. So in, in the last camp, we had a... We had a media, we had a media day, media training day, where we exposed the the players to situations, circumstances, uh, scenarios that that they might have to encounter in the summer. And I've got to say, in 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 my time as as the senior women's manager, there's th there there have been occasions where my players have had to put up with things that they shouldn't have to put up with, and they've handled it with with humility, with class, with dignity, and they've always had the support of myself and and the FA. So. It, it's, it, it goes hand in hand with the growth of the women's game. The growth of the women's game will bring more attention. That's what we've always wanted. We can't moan about it now. We've just got to deal with everything that, that, that comes with that. And I, I'm afraid attention, success, and, and what we've seen this morning is part of, is part of where we're going. Phil, I'm um, talking about the bigger picture. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. What have you noticed since you've been in charge in terms of a change of appreciation of the women's game and general interest in the women's game? Well, I think I think the biggest change has been respect. Respect has been the biggest change. Uh, respect that probably 16 months ago when I went to my first She Believes, uh, I've, got, I've got to say probably the, the, the friends surrounding me probably had never watched women's football before. And then all of a sudden they start to watch it and think that's not bad. And then 12 months later when they're watching the She Believes again, they say that's, that's very good. Uh, and I think we have seen a massive improvement in terms of quality, uh, the product, uh, the technique, the physicality. Uh, I think I think the the investment now that everybody's giving at the FA, the clubs, is putting into football clubs and into developing my players and the players in the within the WSL means that, that we're now seeing elite athletes. I think that's the thing. We're seeing elite athletes playing at the top of their game. The last she believes. To, uh, tournament that we went to, the England versus USA game. I've got to say, at the end of the game, I, I stood next to Jill Ellis, the USA manager, and, and even though we were both disappointed we didn't win the game, we, we both said that was proper football. It was played at an intensity, at a level of quality. There was no no inch given. It was winner. It was it was like a boxing match, and and it was fabulous to be a part of something so so good. So I think respect is the word I think I would use. Uh, and you only gain respect by the quality that you're seeing on the field. And I think what we're seeing now, we're seeing unbelievable quality. Hi, Phil. Charlie Ashworth from Give Me Sports Women's. Um, you spoke earlier about how important it's been for the debutantes for the, at the World Cup mm. to have experience in matches um, previously. How important do you think it will be to have more experienced players like Lucy Bronze, Jill Scott, Karen Kearney in the team just to guide them as women who have already achieved so much in the game? Yeah, well, you, you do need to get the blend right. I think I think when uh, when I first took over, the probably the blend wasn't as right as probably what it should have been. And uh, but but what I would say is is that those those younger players have earned the spot on the plane through the performances and the performances for me and the performances in the WSL and in their respective leagues. So th there's nothing better than younger players coming through and the older players feeling the pressure from from the squeeze from from below. Uh, but it's vital. We went to Qatar in January and, and the mix we got perfectly between the experience controlling the younger ones and the younger ones control uh, pushing the, the, the more experienced ones. There was, a, there was a great determination and a great challenge there for everybody. So uh, we've got the balance right in the squad. Uh, 
But, you know, I, I think there's something about those younger players that they're fearless. Georgia Stanway is fearless. You saw a player on Saturday. Leah Williamson, you, you tell her she's playing for England. You think the, you think that you're going to see emotion and she just looks straight through you saying, is that it? Do you know what I mean? So uh, I, I love that fear, fearlessness. Uh, but the experience is, is going to be vital in moments in the World Cup, I feel, where where you just might need the experience. First game against Scotland is a big game. Emotionally, the occasion, where you need players that have been there and done it. And and, and I've got a nice balance in the squad of, of both. Um, yeah, sorry, and just, just finally, um, you've already faced Canada and Spain, um, mm. two quite different teams in terms of the style of play. Um, what's the approach going into the next few games against Denmark and New Zealand? The, 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 the approach in the next two games is, is to get my players ready for the first game or the, or the group uh, stages games in the World Cup. We're, we've been quite fortunate since the last camp is that my players haven't played that much football, so there'll be some players that'll actually need football and there'll be the Champions final, uh, Tony Duggan and, and Lucy Bronze will probably need resting in those games because they've had a lot of football. I mean, Tony Duggan's played probably 12 more games than most of my squad, so... The, the calendar in Spain is, is quite brutal. So it's about managing the minutes, about making sure that when everybody gets to that first game against Scotland, I've got 23 players match fit. We, we've, we've got, two, we've got two, uh, two games against Denmark and New Zealand, and we've got probably an in-house game as well. So there's, there's three games within that period where we just need to make sure that we're managing people's minutes and, uh, and getting that game rhythm back. Because after... After Arsenal won the league last week, a, a lot of my players have been able to take the odd day off. We've had great support from the manager in the WSL in terms of giving my players days off. Uh, and they'll be, ready to, they'll be ready to come into camp in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.